Hey Beginning Watercolor, it's Brad here and in this video we're going to be going over our color wheel. Alright, so I'm going to try to keep this video short, as short as possible, but I also really want to make sure that you guys understand this and you understand the, um, the directions for this project. This is our first week project, uh, part two. Part one is to make our color charts, which hopefully you guys watched um, me create this in our other video about learning about the paints. Okay, so if you haven't watched that video, I really want to encourage you guys go back and look at it. There are some, there is some really useful um, and important information um, in here. Again, if you, can, you skip over it, you might miss some really valuable stuff. So just, I know it's it's a little long, but go back, check it out. All right, and that's what we're gonna do here. I mean, I could just you know put it in these modules and put it on on the assignments, just make a color wheel. But there's a lot of important stuff in the module as you'll as you'll see about color theory how it's used and all that but in this case I'm going to show you very practical ways to to create this color wheel all right so this is my demo from last year I'm gonna make another one right now I I haven't even done it yet but I'm gonna show you guys step by step on how to do it and then I also in the module now if you're if you're online just watching I'm sure you can find stuff like this but um, I, I put a a template that you can you can download and so you can you can actually print out just like this uh, an empty color wheel that we'll use so that it's gonna see it'll look like this and I'm going to show you really quickly on how to do a, a transfer um, right now all right guys so I'm gonna go over the color wheel really quickly and I'm gonna give you guys some tips okay so a um, couple things that you need to know. I'm going to draw kind of an equilateral triangle here. And then we're going to use our three primary colors, which are red, yellow, and blue. So we got red, yellow, and blue on there. And in theory, we should be able to mix all the other colors from these colors, right? And you guys are probably familiar with this. So if we mix red and yellow together, what do we get? How many know we get orange? And then if we mix blue and yellow together, we get green. And same with blue and red, we get violet for purple. Okay, so from here, so what are those other colors? We can put another equilateral triangle in here. Now this triangle, so basically you just make a star of David here. Uh, this triangle here is going to represent the secondary colors. So these are our primaries right here. Red, yellow, and blue. And then our secondaries are going to be what? Red and yellow orange, blue and yellow, green, blue and red, purple or violet. Okay, so these violet, orange, green, those are our secondary colors. All right, and I always feel like, you know, if you, drawing those those two, like the, the Star David, really can help you uh, when you're making your color wheel to understand things, because um, if you just try to go like a rainbow around, you might forget one or things get uh, misplaced. Okay, so then we also, between these, we have um, our tertiary colors. So these are your, you know, red oranges, your orange yellows, your green blue, or excuse me, green uh, yellow greens or green yellows, and then your blue greens, and then you got your uh, blue violet, and then you got your red violets here. Okay, so those are, those are our tertiary colors. Okay, now, why do I like to, I like to show it this way. Um, because it helps space things out correctly. So when you go in to fill out your color wheel, you know what kind of where they should be placed. And I suppose you could just look online or anything else, but knowing this is going to be very helpful to you. So um, and then you can erase that. And then this is each of these colors. It's its own spot that way. And then what's what we're going to do is we're going to mix directly across for our color wheels. We're going to mix um, complementary colors. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to go back and you need to check out the module and read all about it. Okay, there's a whole whole section on color, <laughs> and it's pretty thorough. So go check it out. Um, but basically, what we're going to do here is we're going to mix across from the color wheel. So. Uh, do this red and green here. 
So we've got a couple more circles in here, okay? More rings, okay? And so, anyway, the, the, you guys get the idea. I'm not gonna do all of this right now. But red and green are opposites on the color wheel, and they need to be directly across from each other, all right, that, for this kind of theory to work, because these are complements. So they're opposites on the color wheel, and they, they share this kind of interesting quality here. So when you mix complements, um, they, there's a really kind of special relationship. So this green, like to darken a green, you, you put a little tiny bit of red in it. And to, uh, to kind of neutralize it a little bit more, you can put a little bit more red in it. So what you're going to do in um, this video is you're going to have your green. So this will be like big green plus a little red. And then this will be green plus a little more red. So a little bit two more. This over here is going to be red, as pure red as you can get. And then this will be red plus a little green. And then this one will be red plus more green. But on your color wheel, in theory, right, what we want to see uh, for this assignment, I want to see you guys mix those colors. Um, and I want to see you, you know, this, this is going to be your pure hue, as pure as you can get, pure red. And then this is going to be red plus a tiny bit of green, and then red plus a little bit more green. It should still look more on the red side than the green side. Now, if you wanted to, you could mix them um, like evenly right here. Um, but th this is, you can just make it black in here. You can just try to make, see what you can do to make it black, which would also be kind of useful. All right, so we're gonna do that. And so you got red and green. You'll do that same with your blue and orange and your yellow and your violet and so on, etc. Okay, so that's, that's what you're gonna do. Now, a couple quick more tips before I move on. All right, so this is stuff that you need to know. Now, when you are um, mixing from your color charts, which remember, we just did that. Like, so you learn something about this. You have a warm red and a cool red. All right, you have a warm, you know, your blues aren't the same, right? They look a little different. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna discover a, uh, a little bit about these colors in relationship to each other when you start making a color wheel. So. So anyway, yeah, so this does get a little bit complicated. So you need to, when you're mixing um, your reds in here, because we don't have, you didn't have a violet in, in, in our kit. So how are you gonna make, how are you gonna make purple? Well, if you use your warm red, the one that's, see, because, let me just break this down. You have a red in here that's, that's over here. That's that matter lake whatever and then this over here I can't remember what it's called the permanent permanent red or something like that <laughs> okay this one's a little bit more more closer to like orange so this red has a little bit of of um, yellow in it it's a little bit on the orange side and this this red has a tiny bit of blue in it and so um, it's on it's on the violet side now when we just look at them we just say it's red but not all reds are the same right so um, it's very um, it's hard to get pigments that are just pure, like pure, um, that hue, like a pure neutral blue, right? Um, some of them are, are more close than others, um, but anyway, that this becomes important. So when you when you start to mix, because if you mix um, that warm red, like this red orange over here with your blue, as you see from your color charts, you're not going to get a really nice purple. So what? So this is why it's also helpful to do this beforehand. How did you get a good purple? Well, it was through your ultramarine blue and your matter lake deep. Okay, those would be your better choices to mix to get that color. All right. Now, if you only have, you know, three or four, maybe five, six colors, in, you know, in your kit, you might not have that option. You might be stuck with only one red or one blue, and then you just have to make the best with it. But our kit that we have specifically, use, use the right blues. We have a blue that's a little bit closer to the, the red, a little bit closer to the, the violet, and a blue that's a little bit closer to the greens and to the yellows. Okay, so uh, use those ones when mixing and trying to come up with your blue greens and your, uh, well, we have a green. Uh, but what I would suggest, uh, you, might, you might make your own green. 
okay? So just try to do your best with it. And then whatever green that you use in here, use that same green through here, and then use that same green mixing with your red, all right? So just, you know, this was implied in there, but hopefully this makes sense. So when you, sometimes when you mix, um, you know, you're trying to make, you're trying to make your violet right here. If you use this red that's over here, the um, permanent red, or whatever, it could be a different red. Uh, sometimes it has just a, it's just a, just closer to that orange side. And if you use that, and if you may try to mix it with that blue, what's, you're not going to get a violet because it has touches of this yellow in it. So it's already starting to mix. So what happens when you mix those, you're already starting to mix this color right here. Right? Does that make sense? Because it's, you're already mixing the pure hues plus the complement. And that's why it turns black. So if you end up with a like a purple and it's just like it looks black, well that's what happened. It's you you've got a tiny bit of the complement in it. All right. So if it just looks like brown or you know something like that, it doesn't look like a, a nice, glorious, majestic purple. That's what's going on. And likewise it, for other colors too. All right. So hopefully that's helpful. Now uh, one last thing. I did this as a hopefully as a service to you. I I made this so um, in your um, in the module so that you can print this out. This sheet of paper. It's a file in there. It, you can print out. Don't paint on this. Okay. Do not paint here. You're gonna make um, you're gonna paint it on um, on your watercolor paper. But I put this in there for a reason. One, um, it can help you. Um, you know, if you want to like do a mock up, you could you could test them here. Um, but the real reason why I want you to do that is so, um, for some people, if you don't have a compass or you just, sometimes it's just really hard just to kind of make things like match up. Um, what you can do is it's a little secret. You can take a, um, pencil and draw on the back of it. See, I've drawn on the back of it here. And so what, what does that do? This is basically, I can do like what we call like a, a graphite or like kind of transfer. And so what I'll do is I can uh, place this on, and maybe I'll show this next in the video, but you place this on a sheet of paper and then trace it and then lift it up, and then it'll be a very light kind of um, transfer uh, image. You'll see this it uh, produced on your, on your watercolor paper, and she'll give you the um, ability to go and uh, go over it with a marker or whatever you want, okay? So that's a little, little hint to, to use that. Okay, so hopefully you found that helpful. All right, and then we're gonna, hopefully I'll just make uh, just a couple little more clips in here that will help um, you in this process. But hopefully, good luck with your, those color wheels. All right, here we go. So what I've done here is, uh, and what you guys can do is you can uh, print this off from the module um, and then, uh, what I did was you can hold this up to, um, you can put this up on a window, flip it around, and then you kind of, you can see it through the, the back side. Um, you can, you'll be able to see those lines and you can trace those lines with, like I've done right here. Um, I used a 5B pencil. Um, if you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. Uh, just grab a pencil that you have. Uh, just any old HB pencil will work for this. Uh, the darker pencils do work a little bit better, so uh, it'll... But, it, but anyway, if you just use what you have. So, and then what you'll do is, so after I've traced this, I put it up on a window, or if you have a light box, um, many of us don't, I don't have a light box, but well, some people do if you made one, you could use it. Um, and then basically you can place this wherever you want on, on here. And I mean, we might as well just, we'll just put it right here. And then um, you just trace it. And so, you do have to press down a little bit harder, but you don't have to press down as hard as you can. Because you're basically pressing the graphite on the other side into the paper. 
and onto the surface. You're rubbing that graphite onto the surface. There's different ways to do this, um, but this will be clean. So you can see, hey, I've just traced those and just keep uh, repeating. And we'll do, do the whole thing like that. And so we'll do these lines. All right, and then when you're all done, you'll have the uh, this traced out on there for you, and that way you don't have to use a compass. Um, all right, so you trace this, you can pull this, pull this up, and it will be there. And then um, I just was kind of putting some of these in here already. I don't know if you guys can see it, but um, I just thought maybe it'd be helpful for you guys to do this as well. You know, when you before you just start painting, uh, it might be helpful just to kind of indicate where those colors are going to be more green. Okay, and um, just one more tip as you guys are kind of putting these in. So, you know, which which red are you going to use? Well, you kind of have to um, when you don't have just pure hues, you kind of have to you know use your best judgment. So I'm going to use uh, for my red. I'll just use that permanent red light. I think that's my closest. To the red this matter lake deep it's just it's a little bit uh, too blue so I'm not going to use that now some people might say oh well you could mix them a little bit you could but um, the you know and you'd end up with like that um, which would be fine um, or that which would be fine um, so you could do that you just put just a tiny bit of that matter lake deep in there but um, when you do that you add you also add the a little bit of the complement because you're adding a little bit of blue into this and a little bit of yellow and so what's that doing well those make green which is on the opposite side of the color wheel so it's going to get darker quicker um, is it the end of the world no but it's up to you I'm not going to do that um, I might do it with a little bit of the yellow because this yellow is it's a very cool yellow and this is a very warm yellow but we'll, we'll see I just kind of test it out first and then I'll, I'll de determine what I'm going to do um, but I'll probably just use this lemon yellow for my my pure yellow um, I might just put a touch of the other in there, but um, the ultramarine blue, I'll probably use that as my standard blue. I'm not going to probably drop any cerulean into that, but um, you could if you want. I just think for simplicity's sake. But now, but when you're going to mix your, your other colors, um, like I know you have a green on here. This green has a lot of, um, a lot of blue in it, and so um, I wouldn't use that green. You might just use like the, the blue and the yellow that you make. To, to get your, your green for this color wheel. So just because you have a green doesn't mean you have to use that one for your green. All right, so it's up to you how, how you kind of do this, but um, we're gonna try to get these as, as good as possible. So again, when you're making your violet though, I wouldn't use this permanent red because that's gonna make, um, if you use that permanent red, right, and you mix it with your ultramarine blue, see, it like almost turns like this dark brown, kind of like really dark purple, it's like a, it's almost like a more of a brown than a purple so um, you know you probably don't want that it's probably better to use that the matter lake with the ultramarine blue and get a nice more vibrant purple in there okay so you get kind of purples like that okay and so you just kind of play around with it but that you use the, the cool red um, and the and that cool and that uh, more purpley blue for for that you know, you don't want to use the cerulean blue for that. You use the cerulean blue, right, when you're trying to get those greens. So you can mix that with your with your lemon yellow to get a green. All right, so anyway, we're going to try this and do the best you can. Hey, good luck with this, guys, and, you know, check out the module and, uh, you know, email me if you have any questions. All right, take care. So here's the one last thing before we go. Just showing you uh, the step-by-step -step on how I... I finished my color wheel. Uh, took about, I don't know, about 45 minutes or so. It's probably going to take you a little bit longer at first if you haven't done this uh, much. But take as much time as you need and make it look good. All right. Take care, guys. Bye.